Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lecture number 40 of the course on statistics and probability. Students, you will recall that in the last lecture, I discussed with you the T distribution, a very important distribution in the theory of statistical inference. And having discussed its basic properties, we applied it to interval estimation regarding mu. In today's lecture, we will be proceeding with the application of the t-distribution regarding hypothesis testing and also interval estimation not only for mu but for mu1 minus mu2. Going back to what I said last time, students, aapko yaad hoga that in one particular situation, the Z statistic is no longer valid and we should apply the T test or the T statistic. And what is that situation? The parent population should be normally distributed, the sample size is small and the standard deviation of the population is unknown. And this is the situation where we apply the T statistic. And what was the formula for the confidence interval for mu? Students, as you now see on the screen, the formula is x bar plus minus T alpha by 2 at n minus 1 degrees of freedom, s over square root of n, where s itself is defined as the square root of sigma x minus x bar whole square over n minus 1. Aye, aaj sabse pehle, let us consider hypothesis testing regarding mu in this particular situation when our parent population from which the sample is drawn that is normal and the population variance is unknown and the sample size is small. Um, let me try to explain this with the help of an example. As you now see on the slide, just as human height is approximately normally distributed, we can expect the heights of animals of any particular species to be normally distributed as well. Suppose that for the past five years, a zoologist has been involved in an extensive research project regarding the animals of one particular species. Based on his research experience, the zoologist believes that the average height of the animals of this particular species is 66 centimeters. He selects a random sample of 10 animals of this particular species and upon measuring their heights, the following data is obtained. 63, 63, 66, 67 and so on. In the light of these data, test the hypothesis that the mean height of the animals of this particular species is 66 centimeters. Students, hum is problem ko kis tarah se approach karenge? exactly the same way as we have been doing before. Dekhi sabse pehli baat ye hai that this is going to be a two-tailed test. Why? Because our null hypothesis will obviously be that mu is equal to 66 and the alternative will be that mu is not equal to 66. Obviously, agar hum keh rahe hai it is not equal to 66, to usme dono possibilities hai that either it is less than 66 or it is more than 66. Isliye, it will be a two-tailed test. The second step is the level of significance and as before, we can set it to be 0 0.05, 5% level of significance. And what is the third step, students? The test statistic. As you now see on the screen, the test statistic 
to be used in this particular situation is x bar minus mu over s over square root of n and s is the one in which the denominator is not n but n minus 1 as explained earlier. Students, aapko yaad hai na ke last time kafi detail se ye discussion maine aapke saath ki ke agar parent population normally distributed hai aur aap usme se ek sample draw kar rahe hai, which is not of a large size and after you draw the sample you find x bar and s uske baad agli baat ye ki is tarah ka agar ek sample na ho balki all possible samples ho yani crore ha samples to phir har sample ke liye x bar aur s and then i said to you that the quantity x bar minus mu over s over square root of n is tarah ki quantities bhi crore ha ho jayengi jiske andar mu jo hai wo agar hum hypothesis testing kar rahe hain to hum null hypothesis ke tahat lenge and whatever hypothesized value we have wohi hum wahan rakh denge ye karne ke baad ye jo quantity hai is qisam ki crore ha quantities aa gayi hamare paas and you will recall that i said to you that it has been mathematically proved that this quantity follows the t distribution having n minus 1 degrees of freedom ye sari baat maine isliye repeat ki ki ye baat aapke zehen mein बैठ जाए कि ये जो हम फार्मूला इस्तेमाल करते हैं किसी भी पर्टिकुलर सिचुएशन में उसकी मैथमेटिकल जो बैकग्राउंड है दैट इज़ व्हाई वी आर यूजिंग इट हवा में से तो नहीं आ जाता ना जी ऑल राइट नाउ दैट वी आर कॉन्फिडेंट दैट दिस इज़ द फार्मूला टू बी यूज्ड क्योंकि इस सिचुएशन में हमारी ये तीनों शराइ पूरी हो रही हैं चूँकि हाइट्स की बात हो रही है तो हमें मालूम है कि हाइट शुड बी अप्रॉक्सीमेटली नॉर्मली डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड सिग्मा इज़ अन नोन क्योंकि सारे जो जानवर हैं उस पर्टिकुलर स्पीसीज के वो तो हमने सारों को तो काबू नहीं कर लिया ना वी जस्ट हैव अ सैम्पल सो चूँकि सारे जानवर नहीं मेजर किए इसलिए सिग्मा इज़ अन नोन एंड द सैम्पल साइज एक्चुअली दैट वी हैव सेलेक्टेड इन दिस प्रॉब्लम इट इज़ ओनली टेन सिर्फ दस ही जानवरों को हमने काबू uh, किया और उनको ही उनकी हाइट मेजर की है तो आप देखते हैं कि तीनों शराइ पूरी हो गई एंड दैट इज़ वाई आई एम गोइंग टू यूज दिस पर्टिकुलर स्टेटिस्टिक द फोर्थ स्टेप ऑफ कोर्स इज टू कंप्यूट द स्टेटिस्टिक एंड एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन द एक्स वैल्यूज आर 63, 63, 66 and so on and when we add them the sum is 678 also when we take the square of every value and add these squares we obtain 46050 substituting these values in the formula of x bar and s square students we obtain the sample mean as 67. 8 cm and the sample variance comes out to be 9.0667 so that when we take the square root the sample standard deviation comes out to be 3.01 cm substituting these values in the formula of t students we obtain t is equal to 1. 89 and please uh, do note once again that instead of mu we have put the number 66 which is exactly what we hypothesized as the mean height of the animals of this particular species all right what is the next step of course it is to determine the critical region aur aapko yaad hai na that this is a two tailed test therefore half of the level of significance to be taken on the right hand side and half on the left hand side and what is the procedure aapko yaad hai ke t table maine last lecture mein introduce ki thi 
and you noticed that in the very first column you have the degrees of freedom and in the top row you have the values of the areas that you would like to have to the right of the t value that you would like to determine. So, tariqa uska kya tha? That you would be looking against n minus 1 degrees of freedom under alpha by 2 if it is a two tailed test. So, as you now see on the screen, in this problem, there are 10 values and therefore we have to use 9 degrees of freedom, n minus 1 being equal to 9. Therefore, when we look against 9, under the value 0 0.025 students, we obtain t equal to 2.262. And as you see in the diagram in front of you, since this is a two-tailed test, therefore, the critical value on the right tail is plus 2.262, whereas the critical value on the left tail will obviously be minus 2.262 because, as explained in the last lecture, the T distribution is absolutely symmetric around zero. And what is the last step? Of course, the conclusion. In this problem, as you just noted, t is equal to 1.89. Yani hamari jo t value hai hai, that is 1.89. And obviously, it is very much in the acceptance region. Is liye ke zahir hai ke wo 2.262 se kam hai or minus 2.262 se zyada hai. Therefore, students, we will accept the null hypothesis. We have no reason to reject it. And we can say that the researcher's claim or his idea about the mean height of the animals of this particular species uh, seems to be supported and justified by this data. All right, students. Now that we have applied the t-distribution to inference regarding one single population mean mu, why do we not proceed to the application of the t-distribution in the case of two populations whose means we are wanting to compare, mu1 and mu2? So, pehle hum interval estimation karte hain mu1 minus mu2 ke baare mein. and after that we will proceed to hypothesis testing regarding mu1 minus mu2. Let us start the first one with the help of an example. As you now see on the slide, record company executive is interested in estimating the difference in the average play length of songs pertaining to pop music and semi-classical music. To do so, he randomly selects 10 semi-classical songs and 9 pop songs. The play lengths in minutes of the selected songs are listed in the following table. For the semi-classical music, we have 3.80, 3.80, 3.43 and so on minutes. Whereas for the pop music songs, the play lengths are 3.88, 4.13, 4.11 and so on minutes. We would like to calculate a 99% confidence interval to estimate the difference in the population means for these two types of recordings. Aapne dekha, students, this is a very interesting problem, um, very musical. Hum ye dekhna chahte hain ke jo play length hai na, the time duration for the songs, aya semi-classical songs ke liye zyada hai, ya pop music ke liye. 
and this person has decided to do a statistical analysis which is wonderful ke unhone wo jo saikdon ya hazaron semi classical songs hain unke paas aur isi tarah se beshumar bahut sare pop songs unme se random samples draw kiye aur unke jo time durations hain unko note kiya and on the basis of this data now we are wanting to construct a 99% confidence interval for mu1 minus mu2 and what does mu1 minus mu2 represent jaisa ke last time indicate kiya obviously we need to first identify um what will subscript 1 stand for and what will subscript 2 stand for jaisa ke last time kaha tha students this is up to you aap chahe to semi classical ko 1 keh de chahe to pop music ke liye 1 keh de so suppose that in this particular problem we decide that we are going to use subscript 1 for semi classical music and subscript 2 for pop music now the level of confidence students is 99% a fairly high level of confidence isliye ki wo executive jo hain wo chahte hain ki zyada se zyada high probability rakh ke ye estimation procedure adopt kiya jaye all right then the next question is obviously what is the formula for the confidence interval for mu1 minus mu2 aur kya hai mu1 minus mu2 the mean time for the classical semi classical music minus the mean time for the pop music yani un dono types ke music ke liye jo play length hai jo time duration hai usme jo fark hai wo on the average kitna hai the formula as you now see on the screen x1 bar minus x2 bar plus minus t alpha by 2 n1 plus n2 minus 2 degrees of freedom multiplied by sp into the square root of 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2 students phir se dobara confuse hone ki koshish aapne shuru kar di hogi but just see that the pattern is so similar to the one that we had last time jab humne khali mu ki baat ki to hamara formula kya tha x bar plus minus t alpha by 2 and minus 1 degrees of freedom into s over square root of n aur ab kyunki x bar ki jagah pe hum do cheezon ke difference ki baat kar rahe hain so we have x1 bar minus x2 bar उसके बाद बिल्कुल पहले की तरह से प्लस माइनस टी एल्फा बाय टू विद सो एंड सो डिग्रीज ऑफ फ्रीडम और उसके आगे जो है वो रिप्लेस करता है पिछली मर्तबा के एस ओवर स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ एन को यानी लुब्बे लुबाब सारी बात कहिए दैट इट इज एग्जैक्टली द सेम फंडामेंटल पैटर्न अगर आप इन बातों को अंडरस्टैंड कर लेना के बुनियादी फिलासफ़ी या बुनियादी उसका जो कॉन्सेप्ट है वो क्या है देन बिलीव मी यू विल नॉट हैव अ प्रॉब्लम ऑल राइट इफ आई वुड लाइक टू अप्लाई दिस फार्मूला फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट मी कंप्यूट ऑल दीज क्वान्टिटीज सो एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन फॉर द सेमी क्लासिकल म्यूजिक द टोटल नंबर ऑफ ऑब्जर्वेशन इज टेन एडिंग दम एंड डिवाइडिंग by 10 we get x1 bar equal to 3.465 also computing the standard deviation by the formula in which the denominator is 9 and not 10 we obtain s1 is equal to 0.3575 similarly for pop music the number of observations is 9 adding them and dividing by 9 x2 bar comes out to be 4.064 and s2 comes out to be 0.2417 now the weighted mean of 
S1 square and S2 square gives us SP square jise hum pooled variance kehte hain and the letter P stands for pooled. SP square is equal to N1 minus 1 into S1 square plus N2 minus 1 into S2 square divided by N1 minus 1 plus N2 minus 1 or is a hum zahir hai ke is tarah se bhi lik sakte hain ke denominator me we have N1 plus N2 minus 2. Students, ye jo formula SP square ke liye mene abhi aapke saamne present kiya. Aapne dekha ke ye bilkul wohi baat hai jo mene pichli martaba kahi usse bhoat similar. Aapko yaad hoga ke jab hum last time PC hat compute kar rahe the, to it was N1 B1 hat plus N2 B2 hat over N1 plus N2. Yani, wo jo weighted mean ka basic formula hota hai, W1 X1 plus W2 X2 over W1 plus W2. Is waqt jo formula humne dekha, wo bilkul waisa hi hai. Sirf itni si baat hai ke is waqt N1 minus 1 and N2 minus 1 are acting as the weights. So, repeating the formula, dekhe, the pooled variance SP square is equal to N1 minus 1 times S1 square plus N2 minus 1 times S2 square over N1 minus 1 plus N2 minus 1. Bilkul wohi pattern jo weighted mean ka pattern hota hai. All right, ab agla swal ye hai ki jo confidence interval ka bunyadi formula tha, usme wo jo t value humne dekhni hai. Um, why are we going to look at the t value against n1 plus n2 minus 2 degrees of freedom? Dekhe, ye wohi number hai na, jo is pooled variance ke denominator mein aa raha hai. Abhi jaisa ki kaha, Pooled variance ka denominator kya hai? N1 minus 1 plus N2 minus 1. Or is a short kar ke hum kaise likhenge? N1 plus N2 minus 2. To yehi wala number, this acts as the degrees of freedom of the T distribution that you have to follow in this case. Ab baat asal mein ye hai ke asal mein to har cheez ke liye, we can go into the detailed mathematical logic and we can do the mathematical derivation. Lekin mein is course mein, chunke aapko zyada derivations ki bijaye applications or concepts pe emphasize karwana chahti hoon. Is liye mein sirf itna kahoongi ki aap ye note karein, ki jo interval hamne last time banaya, us jo khali mu ke liye tha, us mein kya tha? X bar plus minus T alpha by 2 and minus 1 degrees of freedom and multiplied by S over square root of N. So, वहाँ जो n minus one degrees of freedom थी ना, वो भी तो उस s square का denominator ही तो था, जो हम उस वक्त इस्तेमाल कर रहे थे, small s square given by sigma x minus x bar whole square over n minus one. तो याद रखने के लिए, this is the easiest way to remember, कि जो variance sample variance हम इस्तेमाल कर रहे हैं, उसी का जो denominator है ना, हमारी t distribution वो वाली distribution होती है, our statistic is following that particular t distribution which has that many degrees of freedom. So, applying this now in this particular problem, यहां चुके हमारा variance pooled variance है, और इसमें हमारा denominator n1 plus n2 minus 2 है, तो फिर value क्या निकली students? n1 is equal to 10, is liye ke semi-classical music ke humne 10 songs randomly select kiye the and n2 is equal to 9, is liye ke pop music ke 9 songs select kiye gaye the. So, substituting these two values in this expression, what do we obtain? 10 plus 9 minus 2 and that is equal to 17. Lehaza, we will have to look in the t table against 
17 degrees of freedom. So, as you now see on the screen, if we look in the T table against 17 degrees of freedom under 0 0.005, we obtain 2.898. Students, why did I say we have to look under 0 0.005? Aapko yaad hai na? Case problem mein, hamara level of confidence 95% nahi, balke 99% hai. And if we are keeping 99% area in the middle, then obviously half a percent in the left tail, half a percent in the right tail. Isliye, wo jo right tail area jo hume T table mein dekhna hai, that is only half a percent. And half a percent obviously means 0 0.005. All right, now that we have the T value and we have the pooled variance and we have N1, N2, X1 bar, X2 bar, I think we are ready to finally construct our confidence interval. And as you now see on the slide, the 99% confidence interval for mu1 minus mu2 on substituting all these values that we have comes out to be minus 0 0.188. Students, ye jo confidence interval nikal aya, isko aap kis tarah se interpret karenge? Kya aap, aap ye kahenge iske basis pe ke jo semi-classical music hai, uska time duration on the average zyada hota hai compared with the pop music, ya aap iske ulat kahenge? Yaad hai na, subscript 1 stands for semi-classical music, Subscript 2 stands for pop music. Or baat ho rahi hai mu 1 minus mu 2 ki. Or answer humare ya jo result jo humara aa raha hai, that is negative. To iska kya matlab hai? Iska to matlab ye hai na, that on the average, the semi-classical music songs are of less time duration as compared with the pop music. And how much is that, is that difference? Uske liye, you have just constructed the confidence interval. And since our unit was in uh, minutes, lehaza ye jo answer hai, ise bhi aap minutes mein hi interpret karenge. If you now have a look at the interval again, it is minus 1.010 to minus 0.188. To agar aap uski ek extreme dekhe, to wo hai, minus 1.01 .01 minutes, agar minus ko chhode hain, aur sirf uski absolute value pe ghor kare hain, to 1.01 .01 minutes ki baat ho rahi hai. Aur agar dousri extreme pe chale jayein, aur uski absolute value ko dekhein, to 0.188 ya 0.19 minutes ki baat ho rahi hai. To goya hum ye keh rahe hain, ke ye jo difference hai, time difference, ye on the average, yani mean difference jo hai, that is in this range. Students, ab aap ek bohat ahem point note kare. Mene aap se ye kaha tha ki T statistic us situation mein valid hai when the parent population is normal, the standard deviation is unknown and the sample size is small. Aur ye saari baatein us case mein when you have one population and you are drawing one sample from it. Abhi abhi humne jo kuch kiya, usme to humare pas do populations hai na. To ye jo bunyadi sharaayit hai, they will be applied in this case also. Is tarah se ke hum ye keh rahe hai ke agar humari dono populations normally distributed ho, unke variances are known ho, aur aapke jo sample size, jo aapne do sample draw kiye, wo agar small samples ho, then you will be applying this formula. But what I have just said is not complete until I add one more very important statement. In the case of two normally distributed populations, if you are drawing small samples, if the population variances are unknown but equal, then students, we apply the formula that we just applied. Yani, is me ye uh, addition hai ke wo jo population variances are known hai na. Although they are unknown, 
but we have reason to believe that they are not going to be different from each other and we assume that they are equal. So, that common unknown population variance sigma square hai, usi ko hum estimate karte hain by computing sp square, the pooled sample variance. Or ye jo abhi hum kar rahe the problem of the semi-classical music and the pop music students, isme the time duration of the song, ye hai humara variable of interest. Or agar aap gaur kare, to I think you will agree that may it be classical music, semi-classical, may it be pop. Aap sochenge ke agar hum unke time durations ko record kare of all the songs of that type, or us date ka histogram draw kare, to it will be approximately normal. Why? Because most of the songs will have a time duration close to mu 1 in the case of semi-classical music and close to mu 2 in case of pop music. Yani, zyada tar jo songs hote hain, unki duration to taqreeban utni hi hoti hai na, jo uski average duration banti hai. To aap ki jo distribution hai, uska jo hump hai, that lies in the middle. Thode se songs aise honge, jin ki time duration kam hai, थोड़े से songs ऐसे होंगे जिनकी time duration ज्यादा है and so in the tails your frequencies will fall and this will happen in a more or less balanced manner and then you can assume that these populations of time durations of the songs are normally distributed. All right. Now that we have um, done the construction and the interpretation of the confidence interval for mu1 minus mu2 students, let us proceed to hypothesis testing regarding mu1 minus mu2. According to the example that we now have on the screen, from an area planted in one variety of a rubber producing plant, 54 plants were selected at random. Of these, 15 were of types and 12 were aberrant. Rubber percentages for these plants were, for the of types, 6.21, 5.70, 6.04 and so on. And for the aberrants, 4.28, 7.71, 6.48, 7.48 and so on. Test the hypothesis that the mean rubber percentage of the aberrants is at least 1% more than the mean rubber percentage of the of types. Assume that the populations of rubber percentages are approximately normal and they have equal variances. Students, chunke is problem mein phir, do populations involved hain, the population of all the rubber plants of the of type and the population of all the rubber plants of the aberrant type. Then, of course, we need subscript 1 for one of the two populations and subscript 2 for the other. So, suppose that we say that we have subscript 1 for the aberrants and subscript 2 for the off types. Phir hamara null hypothesis kya banega? And what will be the alternative according to our problem? As you now see on the screen, in this case, H0 is written as mu1 minus mu2 is greater than or equal to 1 and H1 mu1 minus mu2 is less than 1. Students, Aye, sir, I speak or can. Hamara question ye tha, ham ye test karna chate the that the mean rubber percentage of the aberrant type is at least 1% more than the mean rubber percentage of the off types. To piriska yehi matlab hai na, ke un means me jo difference hai, that has to be greater than or equal to 1. 1% uh, jo mene kaha. 
तो स्टूडेंट्स यहाँ पे आप इस बात से कंफ्यूज ना हो कि आप सोचें कि अब ये परसेंट का लफ्ज आ रहा है तो इसका मतलब है कि वी आर नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट म्यू बट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट पी आई नो इट इज अ बिट कंफ्यूजिंग पहली दफ़ा में uh, कुछ कंफ्यूजन हो जाती है कि हम पी की बात करने वाले हैं या म्यू की लेकिन आप इसको इस तरह इंटरप्रेट करें कि वो जो प्लांट्स हैं उनमें से जो रबर uh, निकाला जाता है वो एक मकदार में निकलता है ना और वो मकदार उन्होंने परसेंटेज फॉर्म में मेजर की है लिहाजा हमारा जो यूनिट है ना वो इस केस में परसेंटेज ऑफ रबर हैं तो वो तो हमारा यूनिट हुआ जो हम टेस्ट करना चाह रहे हैं वो एवरेज पैदावार एवरेज टाइप की भी और ऑफ टाइप तो जब ऑन द एवरेज कितनी पैदावार होती है आम लफ्ज़ों में तो हम इसी तरह कहेंगे ना तो फिर जब एवरेज का लफ्ज़ कहा तो फिर जाहिर है कि वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट म्यू और मैं फिर अब रिपीट करती हूँ कि हमने कहा था कि हम ये टेस्ट करना चाहते हैं कि वो जो एवरेज टाइप है उनकी पैदावार ऑन द एवरेज कम से कम वन परसेंट ज़्यादा है कंपेयर विद दी ऑफ टाइप इसलिए दनाल हिपोथिस विल बी दैट म्यू वन माइनस म्यू टू द डिफरेंस of the two means is greater than or equal to 1 kyunki greater than or equal to 1 ka yahi matlab hai ke at least 1 and then it is obvious that the alternative will be that mu1 minus mu2 is less than 1 yaad hai na hamesha wo hypothesis null mein place kiya jana chahiye the one which has the equal sign all right what is the next step the level of significance the probability of committing type 1 error the probability of rejecting h not when it is actually true or agar hum use 0.05 rakhe then students um will my critical region lie in the left tail or will it be lying on the right tail you remember last time i explained to you that you always look at the sign that you have in the alternative to decide uh, about the critical region abhi maine kaha ke hamara jo alternative hai wo ye hai ke mu1 minus mu2 is less than 1 to less than sign ki wajah se the critical region is going to fall in the left tail and if the level of significance is 5% then i will have the entire 5% area in the left tail to the left of my critical value और ये क्रिटिकल वैल्यू कहाँ से मिलेगी Z तो है नहीं इट इज़ द टी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन हैविंग इन दिस केस अगेन एन वन प्लस एन टू माइनस टू डिग्रीज ऑफ फ्रीडम सो आई विल बी लुकिंग एट द टी टेबल फॉर ट्वेल्व प्लस फिफ्टीन माइनस टू दैट इज ट्वेंटी सेवन माइनस टू दैट इज ट्वेंटी फाइव डिग्रीज ऑफ फ्रीडम इसलिए कि आपको याद होगा कि अकॉर्डिंग टू द डेटा एक किस्म के 12 पौधे चुने गए और दूसरी किस्म के 15 पौधे सिलेक्ट किए गए थे लेट एस बिफोर एक्चुअली गोइंग टू द टी टेबल कंसिडर द फॉर्मूला व्हिच इज द टेस्ट स्टेटिस्टिक व्हिच इज गोइंग टू इनेबल अस टू टेस्ट दिस पर्टिकुलर हिपोथेसिस। एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्लाइड द टेस्ट स्टेटिस्टिक for this situation is t is equal to x1 bar minus x2 bar minus mu1 minus mu2 and this whole thing divided by sp multiplied by the square root of 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2 students mai chahungi ke aap is formula ki similarity जो लास्ट टाइम फार्मूला म्यू की टेस्टिंग के वक्त इस्तेमाल किया था उसके साथ देखें लास्ट टाइम वी हैड टी इज इक्वल टू एक्स बार माइनस म्यू ओवर एस ओवर स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ एन और तब चूंकि एक ही पॉपुलेशन थी एक ही सैंपल ड्रॉ किया गया था इसलिए वी हैड एक्स बार माइनस म्यू इन द न्यूमरेटर इस वक्त दो पॉपुलेशंस हैं दो सैंपल्स हैं और डिफरेंस 
बिटवीन मीन्स की बात हो रही है इसलिए इन द न्यूमरेटर rather than having x bar minus mu we have x1 bar minus x2 bar minus mu1 minus mu2 baaki reh gaya denominator to aap note kare ki agar aap sp ko square root sign ke andar le jaye you will obtain sp square into 1 over n1 plus 1 over n2 inside the square root sign and if you open the bracket you will have inside the square root sign sp square over n1 plus sp square over n2 and this sp square is the estimator of the unknown common population variance sigma square agar sigma square hame known hota to शायद हम यहाँ पे लिख रहे होते सिग्मा स्क्वायर ओवर एन वन प्लस सिग्मा स्क्वायर ओवर एन टू जो लास्ट टाइम हमारा स्टेटिस्टिक था उस वक्त हमारे डिनोमिनेटर में क्या था एस ओवर स्क्वायर रूट ऑफ एन अगर हम चाहते तो उसको भी हम किस तरह से लिख सकते थे एस स्क्वायर ओवर एन अंडर द रूट अब आप उसको इसके साथ कंपेयर कीजिए पिछली मरतबा हमारे पास था डिनोमिनेटर में एस स्क्वायर ओवर एन इन साइड द स्क्वायर रूट साइन और इस वक्त एस पी स्क्वायर ओवर एन वन प्लस एस पी स्क्वायर ओवर एन टू सो द पॉइंट टू अंडरस्टैंड स्टूडेंट्स इज दैट द फार्मूला दैट यू हैव नाउ इज अ काइंड ऑफ एन एक्सटेंशन ऑफ द फार्मूला That you had last time. और अगर आप इन तमाम चीज़ों को गौर से स्टडी करें और थोड़ा सा टाइम इन पर लगाएँ तो आप यकीन एक बेसिक पैटर्न उसको अंडरस्टैंड कर लेंगे ऑल राइट लेट इस नाउ डू द फोर्थ स्टेप द कॉम्प्यूटेशन ऑफ आवर टेस्ट स्टिटिस्टिक एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्लाइड इन दिस प्रॉब्लम फॉर द एबरेंट kind of rubber plant the sample mean comes out to be 6.74 whereas the sample mean for the off types is 5.62 also the sum of the square deviations of the observations from the mean for the aberrant type is equal to 15.9697 whereas the sum of the square deviations of the observations from their mean for the off types is 5.7737 now sp square which is equal to n1 minus 1 into s1 square plus n2 minus 1 into s2 square over n1 plus n2 minus 2 students this can also be written as summation x1 minus x1 bar whole square plus summation x2 minus x2 bar whole square over n1 plus n2 minus 2 and substituting the values that we obtained just now our sp square comes out to be 0.8697 so that sp is equal to 0.93 now in order to compute t we will be substituting all the values that we have computed x1 bar x2 bar sp and of course n1 and n2 are already known but students the question is what do we substitute in place of mu1 minus mu2 as i indicated in the last lecture we must take that value which we get from the null hypothesis because we always begin a hypothesis testing procedure with the assumption that h not is true so in this example according to the null hypothesis mu1 minus mu2 is greater than or equal to 1 to equal sign ke hisab se hum 1 pick up kare and we put it in the formula for t then 
as you now see on the slide, T comes out to be 0 0.33. The next step, of course, is the critical region. And as I indicated earlier, this is a left tail test. And we will be looking at the T table against 25 degrees of freedom under 0 0.05 because our level of significance is 0 0.05. Hence, the T value that we obtain is minus 1.708, the minus sign being there because it is not the right tail, but the left tail of the T distribution. Students, the last point is the conclusion. Hamari T value kya aai thi? 0.33. Or hamari critical value kya aai hai? Minus 1.708. So, what is the conclusion? Is my value falling in the left tail or is it not? Of course not. Therefore, we will not reject the null hypothesis. And what was the null hypothesis, students? That mu1 minus mu2 is greater than or equal to 1. Yani, wo jo aberrant type ke plants hain aur wo jo off type ke plants hain, unke jo rubber percentages hain, unka jo difference hai on the average, that is greater than or equal to 1%. All right, students, the next topic that I would like to discuss with you is the application of the T statistic in the case of paired observations. Paired observations se kya murad hai? Dekhe, abhi thori der pehle humne rubber plant ki baat ki aur do mukhtalif qismo ke rubber plants ki baat ki aur humne kaha ke unke mean rubber percentages ko hum compare karna chahte hain um ye jo situation hai na isme hum yun keh sakte hain ke jaise both the populations are independent of each other of type ek type hai aberrant ek aur type hai and they are two independent populations paired observations ki situation wo hai where two different observations that you might take they will occur in the form of a pair. Let me explain this point with the help of the example that you now have on the screen. Ten young recruits were put through a strenuous physical training program by the army. Their weights were recorded before and after the training with the following results. We have three columns. The first column gives us the serial number as far as the recruits are concerned, one, two, three, four, so on up to 10. The second column gives the weights of these recruits before the training. And the third column gives the weights of these recruits after the training. And students, we note that for the first recruit, the weight before the training was 125 pounds, but after the training, it became 136 pounds. For the second person, the weight before the training was 195 pounds, and after the training, it became 201. Isi say you can study all the ordered pairs that you have, and do note that the weight is not increasing for every single one of these recruits. Agar aap third recruit ko dekhe, to uska weight before the training, it was 160 pounds. And after the training, it became 158 pounds. Yani do pound kam ho gaye. Isi tarah, if you look at the ninth recruit, the weight before the training was 195 pounds. And after the training, it became 190 pounds. Using a level of significance of 5%, would you say that the program affects the average weight of the recruits? Assume the distribution of weights before and after the program to be approximately normally distributed. Students, I hope that this problem has clearly indicated to you the situation where we will be dealing with paired observations. Dekhye, wohi recruit, ek recruit, 
آپ اس کا ویٹ کریں بفور دا ٹریننگ آپ اس کا ویٹ کریں آفٹر دا ٹریننگ تب ہی آپ یہ بات میجر کر سکیں گے نا کہ آیا اس ٹریننگ پروگرام سے ویٹ پر کوئی اثر پڑتا ہے یا نہیں سو دس از واٹ وی ووڈ کال نیچرل پیئرنگ اینڈ دین دیر آر سچویشنز ویئر وی ہیو پیئرنگ بائی ڈیزائن آپ فرٹیلائزر کی کوئی نئی پروڈکٹ لانچ ہوئی ہے مارکیٹ میں اور آپ اس کو دیکھنا چاہتے ہیں کہ از اٹ مور افیکٹیو دین دی آلریڈی ایگزٹنگ ون اور ناٹ اگر آپ اس نئے فرٹیلائزر کو ملتان کے کسی علاقے میں اپلائی کر دیں اور جو پہلا ایگزٹنگ فرٹیلائزر ہے اس کو کراچی کے کسی علاقے میں یا پشاور کے کسی علاقے میں آپ اس کو اپلائی کریں اور بعد میں جو پیداوار ہو تو آپ کہیں کہ جو ملتان والا ہے اس کی پیداوار بہت زیادہ ہے اور کراچی والا یا پشاور والا اس کی کم ہے تو اس لیے ہمیں سیکنڈ فرٹیلائزر استعمال کرنا چاہیے اسٹوڈنٹس آپ یہ نوٹ کریں کہ یہ بھی تو ممکن ہے نا کہ اٹ از ناٹ دا فرٹیلائزر وچ از بیٹر اٹ از دا سوائل وچ از ڈفرینٹ شاید ملتان کا جو سوائل ہے اس پرٹیکولر سیڈ کے لیے دیٹ از بیٹر دین دا ون ان کراچی اور پشاور سو دس از ناٹ دا وے ٹو کمپیئر دا ٹو فرٹیلائزرز واٹ وی شوڈ ڈو از ٹو اپلائی بوتھ ٹائپس آف فرٹیلائزرز آن دا سیم ٹائپ آف سوائل اینڈ دین وی کین گیٹ یلڈ فار فرٹیلائزر ون اینڈ اے یلڈ فار فرٹیلائزر ٹو اینڈ ناؤ دے آر کمپیریبل کیونکہ سوائل کے حساب سے تو دونوں ایک جیسے سوائل میں لگے تو سوائل کا تو اب افیکٹ اس میں شامل نہیں ہے نا اب اگر پیداوار میں کوئی فرق ہے تو اٹ از بیکاز آف دا فرٹیلائزر یہ ساری ڈسکشن جو میں نے ابھی آپ کے ساتھ کی اسٹوڈنٹس دس از ایکچولی ٹیکنگ می ان ٹو دی ایریا آف ایکسپیریمنٹل ڈیزائن وچ از اے واسٹ ایریا لیکن اس وقت میں صرف یہ چاہتی ہوں کہ آپ اس بات پہ کنسنٹریٹ کریں کہ جیسا کہ بتایا سم ٹائمز دا پیئرنگ از نیچرل اینڈ سم ٹائمز اٹ از بائی ڈیزائن اب سوال یہ پیدا ہوتا ہے کہ ہاؤ ول بی ٹیسٹ دس اپوتھس دیٹ ڈز دا فزیکل ٹریننگ افیکٹ دا ویٹ بڑھتا ہے کم ہو جاتا ہے یا کوئی فرق نہیں پڑتا اسٹوڈنٹس دا بیسک پروسیجر از جسٹ دا سیم دا فارمولیشن آف دی ہپوتھس دا لیول آف سگنیفیکنس the test statistic and so on. The point to note is that the test statistic in this particular situation will be d bar minus mu d over sd over square root of n. Exactly the same pattern as before, but the only thing being that our variable now is not x but d, where d denotes the difference of the weights before and after the training. In the next lecture, we will be discussing this point in detail. In the meantime, I would like to encourage you to attempt a few questions of the type that we have discussed today. My best wishes to you and until next time, Allah Hafiz.